And we're back! Back to what, you ask? Why, back to the ongoing plot recap of the Disney Channel animated series The Owl House video series. Whatever. Yep, it's time to revisit The Owl House, the Disney Channel cartoon about a teenage girl getting lost in another dimension. But not the one with frogs. Or the one about racism. I recapped season one of this show last year, and now that season two's wrapped up, it's time for me to regurgitate everything I saw back to you guys, but with far worse drawings and explanations and everything else. As always, things are definitely gonna be oversimplified here. If you want the full Owl House experience, watch the Owl House. These recaps are basically cartoon cliff notes, just keep that in mind. So first, where'd we leave off in season one? Well, for a full deep dive into that, there's my season one recap. But basically, a girl named Luz trips into a world of magic, learns to cast spells with paper, and meets an owl lady named Ida who becomes her new mom. And King is also there. New mom Ida hates the emperor, Velos, because he makes everyone join something called a coven, which means they can only practice one kind of magic, indicated by the sigil they all get branded with. Also, Velos sometimes has heart palpitations that nearly turn him into a giant monster, and he has to consume the essence of these things called palismen to stop it. This normal is the most normal, and new mom Ida also turns into a monster sometimes because her sister Lilith was mean. But after fighting for a while, they make up and decide to share the curse equally. Then Luz fights Bellows because he's evil and doing evil things. He keeps going on about some stupid day of unity and it's annoying. So she beats him up, but blows up her only way home in the process. Oops. Okay, season one mini recap over. Now it's season two and Lilith is just crashing at the owl house, repairing her relationship with Ida, getting used to her new curse, and befriending that big owl worm thing that lives in their walls, Hootie. They seem to be getting along. Lilith and Ida are struggling without their magic, but Luce is teaching them to use glyphs. Luce herself is basically the same as always, going on adventures, learning new spells, trying to find a way home, and definitely not super obviously crushing on her former rival Amity. All that blushing is just because of allergies. Meanwhile, Bellos is rebuilding the portal to the human realm and preparing for the Day of Unity, which is kind of the big, bad, ticking clock of the season. But besides the Day of Unity, the main focus of this season is Luce's attempts to get back to the human realm. And I mean, yeah, I, that's kind of always been the point. But things actually start to pick up steam when Luce gets tipped off to an interesting fact. She's not the only human to have visited the Boiling Isles. So she meets up with Amity and the two go digging at the local library where they discover ancient diary logs in a mouse? Skeleton? It doesn't matter. This was the diary of a human named Philip Witterbane who got lost in the Boiling Isles a long time ago and wrote about the things he learned as he tried to get back home. Almost like, a journal? Okay, I'll stop. But Luce is now one step closer to finding a way home, and she got to spend some time with Amity, who now has purple hair and gives Luce a kiss on the cheek. I swear to God, I've never seen two people blush more in my life. Starting to worry it's some kind of circulatory issue. Luce starts studying as much as she can from Philip's diaries and learns about something called Titan's blood. Yeah, you know those giant skeletal remains this entire civilization is built on? Yeah, that used to be a Titan. They're like gods in the Boiling Isles. And apparently, even just a little bit of their blood is powerful enough to tear the fabric of reality and open portals to other dimensions. But since the Titans are extinct, their blood is extremely rare. And obviously, Bellos is after it too. <laughs> So, uh, to make a long story short, after a series of wacky adventures, people nearly die. Both Luce and Bellos end up with some Titan's blood. Bellos needs it to rebuild the main portal, but Luce decides to build a portal door of her own. It's pretty unstable and not fully functional. She can look into the human realm, but not enter it. So, Luce is able to get a glimpse of home where she finds... Oh! Okay! Another loose? Well, not really. This is V, a shape-shifting demon from the Boiling Isles who's been living in Luce's place since she's been gone. Yeah, it turns out Luce's mom has had absolutely no idea she's been missing this entire time. Completely unaware. But of course, once she's faced with a... This scenario, some questions had to be asked. Luce's mom finds out about everything. She lets V stay with her, but is naturally heartbroken that Luce chose to stay in the Boiling Isles instead of coming home. And just as the portal starts to fail, Luce promises her mom to come back home and stay. Luce is then pulled back into the Boiling Isles, the portal collapses in on itself, and that is the last she sees of her mom for now. But Luce isn't done hopping into other worlds, now teaming up with Lilith to travel back in time. Luce wants wants to meet that Philip guy and try to get his help. But of course, he is from a very long time ago. And apparently, time travel is absolutely definitely something you can do in the Boiling Isles, just no one had ever actually done it until now. Luce and Lilith just out here casually discovering time travel. They hop back in time and manage to find Philip, who's 
acting a little sketchy, not gonna lie. But he does agree to help Luce if she helps him find this mysterious character he's been looking for, the Collector. So the three of them all head to, well, the Titan's head. Luce and Lilith help Philip. Luce and Lil... <laughs> There's so many L's, why are there so many L's? Luce and Lilith help Philip open this big door and Philip's like, oh, would you look at that? It's time to, uh, t time for, time for me to, uh, it's time, time for the, uh, it's time, time, BETRAYAL! A giant monster that Philip knew would be there attacks our heroes while Philip just moseys on over to grab this shiny round tablet with a moon on it and dips. Luckily, our heroes escape, Lilith punches Philip in the face, and they head back to their time. Oh, and Philip is definitely Bellows. Look at him. He's eating palismen, hating witches. Yeah, that's Bellows. But Luz doesn't know that yet, so shh, 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 shh. Uh, so, now let's shift focus onto someone who hasn't really had a whole lot of spotlight so far. King. The good old king of demons. Or at least, that's what he calls himself. He's just a little guy. And how could he have been the king of anything? Well, Lilith and Hootie were thinking the same thing. So, to prove he's not lying, King takes the gang all the way to this castle on a mysterious uncharted island. According to King, this castle is where he ruled over armies and ate glorious feasts. But Ida is like, eh. Yeah, so apparently none of that King of Demons stuff was true. Ida just found King eating bugs in this castle, took him home with her, and made up all the King of Demons stuff to make him happy. So King's life is a lie, but that doesn't explain what he was doing in this castle in the first place. Well, turns out this is where he was born, hatched from an egg and left on his own after hearing the roar of what he believes to have been his dad. King might not be the King of Demons, but there's definitely a lot more to learn about who he really is. And King is now to determined to find his dad and get answers. But speaking of parents, between Luce getting closer to going home and King looking to find his dad, new mom Ida is starting to get kinda nervous. She's really grown to love her little family and now it feels like everyone's trying to leave. So she does what anyone should do in this situation, Drink the pain away. But after enabling her unhealthy coping mechanism, she runs into a group of rebel bards fighting some of the Emperor's scouts. And if there's one thing that can cheer Ida up, it's sticking it to the Emperor's coven. So she helps the bards escape, only to discover... <gasps> Uh, uh, who is that? This is Rain Whispers. They're actually the head of the Bard Coven, secretly rebelling against the Emperor and his coven system. And they just happen to also be Ida's ex. But they still seem to get along, so, you know, it's fine. It's not weird. Don't make it weird. Ida decides to run with Rain's group of rebels for a bit to stop some of Bellos' plans. He's been arresting a bunch of wild witches and forcing them to join covens for some reason. I mean, that's kind of what he was already doing, but he's doing it harder now. But the bards are caught by two other coven heads, Darius and Eberwolf. Ida nearly sacrifices herself to defeat them, still fearing that her family doesn't need her anymore. But Rain's like, dude, shut up. Like, actually shut up. And they give themselves over to the coven heads to let Ida escape. Man, this season's been heavy so far. Everyone's got so much to deal with. And with all this happening at once, I know exactly what you're thinking. What about Hootie? That's right, this Mickey Mouse voiced owl worm building thing is finally plot relevant. Woo! See, Hootie sees just how much everyone's going through and decides to help out. But of course, this is Hootie, the dude who barfs in almost every episode he's in. So naturally, it all goes horribly wrong, until it doesn't. Completely by accident, Hootie helps King discover that he has supersonic scream powers, he helps Ida come to peace with her curse, unlocking this wicked looking harpy form, and he helps Luz finally ask out Amity. And you know what that means, more blushing. Are you okay? This much blushing can't be healthy, do you need medical assistance? She says yes, obviously, meaning that Luz and Amity are finally an official couple. Hooray! Hootie has served a purpose and everyone had their status quo changed in one fell swoop. Man, it's like they had to squeeze more of their story into less episodes because Disney wouldn't give them a full third season or something. I don't know. So that's what all the good guys are up to. What about the villains? Well, as we know, Bellos is still working on rebuilding the portal and prepping for the Day of Unity with the Collector. We don't know much about him yet, we just know he's super powerful. Though technically he's trapped in that moon tablet, communicating with Bellos as a shadow on the wall. And Bellos struck a deal with the Collector. He teaches Bellos super powerful magic to help with the Day of Unity, and in return, Bellos will use some of his Titan's blood to set him free from 
from the tablet. I'm sure he'll keep up his end of the bargain. But it's not just Belos that Luce and the gang have to put up with this season. There's also Belos' nephew and right-hand man, the Golden Guard, aka Hunter. This guy's a pretty consistent thorn in our hero's sides throughout the season, but after a few run-ins with Luce and her friends, you can see him start to question what he's doing. Especially as we see how Belos mistreats him and hands him empty promises so he'll do what he's told. Man, so many mysteries with this Belos guy. If only we could find out what he's thinking. Like, really just travel inside his mind. So Luce travels inside his mind. And she brought Hunter with her. It was an accident. But this gives her a great opportunity to find out more about Belos' plan and show Hunter that he shouldn't trust Belos. The two go exploring through Belos' mind and we finally get all the answers. First off, the Day of Unity. Belos promised the people of the Boiling Isles that the Day of Unity would purge the world of wild magic and create a new paradise for the worthy. And well, at least half of that's true, but the full story is way more concerning. See, Belos has been working with the Collector on something called a draining spell that he plans to cast on the Day of Unity, which will zap all the power from every witch branded with a coven sigil and wipe out not just all magic, but all life in the Boiling Isles. And all in the name of protecting humanity from evil. So yeah. That's not a good thing. Though it does explain why Bellos dedicated so much of his life to creating the coven system and the bogus stories behind it. It allowed him to easily brand nearly every witch with some kind of sigil. The dude's nothing more than a witch hunter who used snake oil tactics to gain power. Even changing his name to Bellos because Philip kept getting run out of town. And also, let's not ignore this, Bellos is old. Like, way old. Remember, this is the same guy Luce had to discover time travel just to meet. He's been consuming the souls of Palismen as a way of keeping himself alive, but all those Palismen souls jostling around inside of him have warped and corrupted him. So he's always on the verge of transforming into this hideous monster. But that's not all. Hunter sees firsthand how Bellos' stories about wild magic hurting his family were all lies to sell people on the coven system. He even faked being attacked by wild witches in front of a crowd of people with the help of, uh, that's the Golden Guard. That's Hunter. And I don't mean they look similar, I mean that is Hunter. But this was a long time ago. How's that work? So yeah, here we find out that Hunter is something called a Grimwalker. Yeah, basically a copy of someone Belos knew a long time ago. And he's not the first. Hunter is just the latest in a long, long, long line of copies. All the others went against Belos at one point or another, so he, uh got rid of them. Hunter learns he's not who he thought he was, Luce learns exactly who Belos is, and the two manage to escape Belos's mind. But now, they're in more danger than ever. Belos knows they were in his mind, so they gotta hide. Hunter leaves the Emperor's Coven and starts hiding out at Hexide School, and Luce just takes a little trip to another mysterious, uncharted place with Hootie and King, where they all meet, oh, more kings. Dude, is this King's family? Well, no, unfortunately. These guys are just regular old witches who call themselves Titan Trappers. According to them, though Titans are supposedly extinct, there's still one more out there, and they've dedicated their lives to learning to trap that Titan so they can kill it. You know, mercilessly, and with murder. Heck, they even dress up like Titans to trap it. Huh. Well, this has implications. So, King, just a little guy King, is a titan, the last of the titans. Those unfathomably gigantic creatures who are basically the gods of this world. The creatures so powerful that even just a drop of their blood can create interdimensional portals. Yeah, King is uh, one of that. And he's currently surrounded by an entire town of people who have dedicated their lives to trapping and killing his kind. Naturally, Lou scoops up King and bolts out of there. Don't worry, she took Hootie too. They all make it back safe and the Owl House has been ransacked. Yeah, uh, the Emperor had the whole place trashed. Luckily, Ida and Lilith were able to escape and everyone eventually reunites. Ida, Lilith, Luce, King, and an entire secret rebellion group. Uh, so, turns out, Rain and their bards are all okay, and the two coven heads that captured them before, Darius and Everwolf, were actually on their side the entire time. Cool, oh, and there's Steve. He's Steve. These guys all formed a rebellion to stop the Day of Unity, and they've got a plan. See, Belos needs all nine of the Coven Head's magic to power the draining spell. So the group wants Ida, disguised as Rain, to take their place so the Owl Beast curse can corrupt the spell. Which means, after a lifetime of avoiding it, Ida finally had to join a coven and be given a sigil. Meanwhile, Luce finally meets back up with her friends Willow and Gus, plus Hunter, who's now on their side. He's like best friends with Gus, it's cool. And of course, Amity. 
Remedy. I kind of feel bad that I've not been talking about her as much. She's been dealing with a lot of her own family stuff this season. Her mom is super controlling, very business oriented, and she's been creating these robots for the Emperor's army. Meanwhile, her dad has just kind of been letting it all happen, even though no one is happy. Eventually, he does kind of talk to Amity and they start to work things out. But the mom, just total lost cause. She knew about everything Bellos was planning. She was just a total, just like, there's, there is definitely a divorce in the future. <laughs> but Luce and Amity finally reunite and even share their first kiss, which is an incredibly sweet moment. You can tell it's important because the animation gets fancier. But before too long, Luce gets kidnapped and taken back to Bellos's lair. You know, the Titan's head. Bellos himself attracts a massive crowd to the Day of Unity ceremony and begins the draining spell. He then quickly zips back to the Titan's head where the collector's like, this is awesome. You're gonna release me now, right? Right? Yeah. Shocker, Bellos doesn't hold up his end of the bargain and straight up tosses the collector's tablet down a chasm. This is also where he put the other hunters when he killed them. You can see their remains, they're all dead down there. And all this just in time for Luce to finally get dropped off at the lair. So once again, it's Luce against Bellos. Meanwhile, at the ceremony, Ida and Rain's plan does work to corrupt the draining spell, until the Coven Heads catch on to their plan and force Rain to take their spot in the spell, allowing it to fully activate, draining all the life and power from any witch branded with a sigil. So fun, everyone's about to die. But back at the Titan's head, Luce pulls a fast one on Bellos, again, and uses this glove she found straight up just lying around his lair to brand Bellos with a sigil, meaning he's now being affected by his own draining spell. But instead of reversing the spell, he collapses and transforms into that giant gross monster right as Luce's friends show up to help out, including King, who manages to find the Collector's tablet down in that chasm and starts chatting. The Collector immediately recognizes King as a Titan, which means he has the power to set him free. So the two strike a deal. King sets the Collector free if the Collector stops the draining spell. One pinky promise later and the tablet cracks open, unleashing… huh. That guy from FNAF. Okay, seriously, this is the Collector. He's a little kid with the powers of God. He stops Bellos mid-attack like it was nothing. And then with one boop of his forehead, he does this. Uh, I think Bellos is dead. I mean, he just got splattered by an otherworldly cosmic entity with powers beyond comprehension. I. I, I, I don't think you can come back from that. The dude then stops the draining spell with just a wave of his finger, saving millions of lives in a second. But then he gets kind of carried away and starts bending the world around him for fun, putting Luce and her friends in immediate danger. Their only option to make it out alive being Bellos's portal to the human realm. I see where they're going with this. Unfortunately, King wasn't able to escape with the others, leaving him and Ida in the Boiling Isles as Luce, Amity, Hunter, Willow, and Gus all all become trapped in the human realm, officially bringing season two to an end. Yep, Luz takes everyone back to her house where she can finally reunite with her mom, and then the credits roll. Yeah, things definitely got a lot more intense this season, and unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot of the Owl House left after this. The upcoming third season is not only gonna be the show's last, but it's not even a full season. It's just three 44-minute specials. But even with the show so close to its end, we've been left on the biggest cliffhanger so far. What is the Collector gonna do to the Boiling Isles? What about King, Ida, Lilith, Rain, all of them? What What's gonna happen in the human realm? What about Hootie? We don't know yet, but what I do know is I wanna watch Bellos get splattered again. Oh man, that is brutal.